health. This is a really important piece. Um, you notice the first thing we have up here is the seasonal and H1N1 vaccines. Not required officially, but let's say you get to Rabat and you're coming down with the flu. You may not even get in the country. Because they have these scanners now, if you've got a fever, you get back on a plane. So um, it, if you get sick while you're there, you know they say it's about a week to deal with swine flu, that's your entire trip. We're giving out free inoculations here on campus. They're not free. H1N1. The seasonal's not. Seasonal is not, but seasonal should be covered by insurance, I understand. No, no. It's no, not covered. No, okay. It's $20. It's $20. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I paid $20, but I thought your insurance covered it. Okay. I'd hate to, for lack of, for not wanting to spend $20 to, like, totally trash your entire trip because you were sick, would not be cool. So, I can't require you to do it. It's not required. But what they can do is, as I said, they can send you back if you've got a fever. You can spend all your time in the hotel. Yes? Just to add to that, people that I know that have been traveling recently, well, since the whole H1N1 and the scanning has started happening, people are typically doing, because if you have a fever, whatever it's related to. And yeah. So people are like taking some Tylenol about two hours before the plane lands, just in mm -hmm. case. Yeah. <laughs> just as an FYI. Yeah, they're not just scanning you for each one and Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, flying sometimes people can get kind of funky. Oh, yeah. Interesting. That's a good idea. So just as, as a note. <laughs> for, yeah. I don't want to be more <laughs> taken on it. I'm not time. Um, these, I met with the health center, and they will meet with any of you. But their recommendations are hepatitis A, a um, typhoid, tetanus I think you had to get it before you got here. And there are some places where there are bugs, and you might, it's usually a good idea to bring some DEET, um, kind of skin protection for bites. And we're not going to, there's, I don't know if you've heard of leishmaniasis, it's a real nasty thing that comes out of an insect bite. We're not going to an area where that's endemic, but if you're traveling around Morocco before or afterwards, get, just to be smart. What's it called? Leishmaniasis. Is that our bugs? Deep, deep is the stuff that's in, um, like bug spray. No, I know the. I was the. Yeah. Wait, so leishmaniasis with the deep protects you against? It will protect you against insect bites. It will. It will scare. It. The bugs will not want to bite you when you're covered with it. I guess. I, but I mean, like this leishman is—is that a—is that something else can be a vaccinated against? No, it comes from an insect bite. So oh. they're saying the recommendation is that you cover yourself any exposed parts of your body with with um, something that has at least I think it's thirty percent heat in it. Um, it's not cheap, but it's good. I thought that was illegal. I thought heat was really bad for you. Heat is really bad for you. It's in most aerosol bug sprays, like any off and any of that stuff that has pretty high percentage yeah. of heat. It's not very good for you, but it's small, <laughs> as long as you inhale it and in small okay. doses, it's fine. And it's also, you don't put it under your clothes, right. you put it... Yeah, just exposed. Yeah. Stuff. The is like a parasite. I'd rather have, yeah, vegan than yeah. parasite and yeah. yeah. short. Yeah. 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 There is, speaking of parasites, food and water precautions, and we'll talk about that more, but you've all, I think many of you have traveled to places where you have sort of normal food and water kind of thing, eating carefully, that kind of stuff. I'm one of these people who loves street food, and I have been really sick on street food, so, um, but I still love it, but you know, it's your lives, your body, so you make the choices. Um, course assignments, the syllabus will be ready, I've already got a draft of it out there, uh, in about two weeks. Um, there's couple things for um, people who are just doing this for ICC, and there's two, there's an optional extra credit for people who have taken the IE courses beforehand. Um, there's a final project, about 10, 12 pages. There's some reflections, and, and I can explain those in a, in a minute. There's a cultural model presentation before you go, which is this group of 25 students will be broken into, you will break yourselves into six groups. And each group will study 
a, an ICC model, a cultural model. So someone might study Gerd Hofstede's stuff on um, um, oh, what? Why can't I think of that? Uh, individualism, collectivism, and as part of that, you you make a Moodle-based presentation. So you can do a PowerPoint, you can do a narrated PowerPoint, you can do a video, you can do an outline on looking at the models and the U.S. and Morocco with those models. So there will be that that will happen. Uh, there is another final project. Those of you who are, who are taking the IE courses, because you'll be sort of grounded in some of the literature of international education, you can take an extra credit when there will be a small final project and, and some tasks maybe to do on the, on the program. And what that IE credit is about is what um, you all have seen the Wizard of Oz, right? You know, the idea of pulling back the curtain. So for the IE credit, what we'll do is we'll talk about what did it take to develop this course? What, how is it going? What, is, what are some of the issues that we face in terms of everything from legal to budget to um, culture kinds of things? and then. Um, so we're kind of, this is a, um, a, an exercise in, in that pulling back the curtain piece. So those of you who are not in IE, I encourage you to talk with your own faculty um, in your degree areas about some other independent study that you might be able to do. Because this course, it's a lot of fun, but it takes a lot of work. So you might as well get a little extra from it. Yeah. Are you going to touch on any additional course we might be able to take while we're there on our own time for the option three language? I can. I can. Uh, let me just say something about it right now. I've just been in some email exchange about that with the folks there. CCCL, which is the Center for Cross-Cultural Learning based in Rabat, offers Arabic courses. The problem is that the is that particular institution is closed down from December 28th to January 3rd, as are most places. You can stay later, but you know you have to be back here. You, so you can you can probably squeeze in like five or six days of courses before you have to be back here. I haven't calculated exactly. Um, so you could do that as part of option three. There are other organizations as well, and we can check with them. But I don't have information about them at this point. What we've done in the past, like last year in Panama, we went down, um, a lot of people went down a week or two early and did a, a crash Spanish course from wherever level they were at, from beginning to advanced. Um, and they used it for the options. Yeah? What did you say the name of that institute is? CCCL. And if you want to look up their website, it's cccl.ma. MA is the country code for Morocco. I'm sorry I keep walking around. Just. Okay. Yeah, we have, um, uh, Jess has a piece of paper here, which... Um